this art form is not simple. We see on stage everything glamorous and fabulous, but what it takes to be that good and look that effortless. This is kind of the first time when I sincerely questioned, will I be able to pull off the final challenge? And stretch that knee, arm lower, eyes up. Will I be an embarrassment to the ballet community? Ballet is a staple part of many young women's lives. A lot of people try ballet, but eventually quit. I was one of those people. I quit when I was eight. But I've always thought from time to time what it would have been like for me if I had stuck with it. Ballet is the epitome of grace and beauty and perfection. What fascinates me the most about ballet is that it's an art form that requires you to tell a story using only your body. And as a storyteller myself, I feel it's important for me to explore and learn all different ways to tell stories. So for the next six weeks, I am going to follow the training regimen of a professional ballerina, culminating in a final recital in front of a live audience. Challenge accepted. My name is Allison Stroming. I first started dancing when I was two years old. I've been a professional now for about 10 years. Ballet is a classical art form that uses music and sets and costumes to portray a story. It takes years to master and you still don't master it. Even as a professional dancer, we're working every single day towards perfection, but there is no such thing as perfection in ballet. For the next six weeks, I'm going to be training Michelle, eventually point shoes and partnering, and then for the the final performance will just piece everything together and it will be her shining moment. Hi! <laughs> I'm so Alice. <laughs> Thank you so much for of taking course. me on. Before we begin with the bar, let's situate this hair. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'll teach you how to do a ballet bun. So you want to take a couple of pins to like flatten this down. And then usually you want to hairspray like the flyaways. So that's good for now. Feel like more aerodynamic. Awesome. <laughs> Michelle will be starting with the basics, the positions of the feet, our arms. There's six positions in ballet of the feet. This is first position. So you have your heels together and your legs are nice and straight. Second position is to the side. And you want to have a nice lifted elbow. We're gonna go to third position. It's a little bit crossed over and your arm is in third position. Now we're gonna go to fourth position and this is, oh, good morning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice and crossed. What is happening? So you wanna keep having your feet turned out though. There you go. That's fourth position, how you doing? Great. <laughs> now fifth, you're going to take this front leg and squeeze back and this is crossed all the way this time. Why does my ass hurt <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's gonna happen. And then there's sixth position, which is just parallel. Oh, I would like that but one. Unfortunately, it doesn't really get used in ballet that much. That makes so. sense. <laughs> <laughs> At the bar, we always start with plies. Everything in ballet is in French, all of our terms. So plie means to bend. We're gonna plie one and two. And then we're gonna do a nice tendu, which means to brush. Tendu side and lower in second. One and two, but make sure you keep your belly in. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a little bit different than squats because we're not going up and down. We're keeping our posture nice and tall. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm on an elevator. <laughs> I'm just that of my body. Other side. One other rule. There's so many rules. <laughs> so between left and right, you always want to turn towards the bar. It's just like common courtesy. We're going to lift our leg onto the bar. Look at that. <laughs> Two, three, four. You should feel a nice stretch in your hamstring. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> she feels it. I do. We're gonna keep your hips square because we're doing front. Good. Now stay there. We're gonna do one plie, plie. Wait, what? Good. In ballet, there's a right way and a wrong way. There's no way to just fake it. You have to know the technique. So that's just the warm up. Kind of, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every single motion I did on day one required a verbal correction from Allison. There is a certain way to point your foot. Stop, not too far. <laughs> when you drag your foot on the floor, you have to do it in a specific way and not move your hips at the same time. Say it first, first. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Arms, perfect. Stop, but keeping your hips square. Elbow, back leg. Stretch that knee, stop, stop, stop. A little higher, Ugh. arm lower, eyes up. There are so many details. I know, it's like, 
Wow! <laughs> My name is Irina Dvorovenko and I'm former principal dancer with American Ballet Theatre. Ballet originally was created in the Italian Renaissance courts of the 15th century. It was the art form which was entertaining elite. The dance, it's a way of people express the feelings or telling the story through the movements. For the ballet dancer to be a ballerina, it requires years of education, training your body, gaining the strength. Ballet is not ordinary thing. You need to be extraordinary. You need to be unreachable. You need to be divine. To complete everything in this short time would be pretty much impossible. Today made very clear one thing. I am at ground zero. <laughs> And I'm honestly extremely nervous to make this video because I know how passionate the ballet community is. And the last thing I want to do is disrespect the community or misrepresent the art form. I want to be clear here that I'm by no means expecting to be even half good at this by the end of this. I'm doing this to experience, understand, and shed light on how difficult this art form is. And it's really really hard. <laughs> now we're going to start pirouettes. We're gonna go tendu, side, up, and down. You can do it, up, oh, that's it, and down, ta-da! It's fun. <laughs> you wanna do just a little bit of jumping and then we'll be done? Yeah. Okay, you're gonna jump in first. One, two. So you wanna keep your arms low though, you don't wanna use your oh, arms. Okay. Up and down, up and down. And every jump, our legs are nice and stretched. So we're gonna yeah. do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Jump one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. My toes hurt. <laughs> it's day one, midnight. I am so sore from today. Garrett, you are being, you are not massaging me before the camera was rolling and now the camera was rolling. Oh my gosh. I have never experienced this type of soreness in my feet. It feels like I got hit with a hammer. This is ballet unfiltered. I realized that while I was really focused on trying to get the physicality correct, I was not prioritizing or paying attention to my diet and nutrition. And I knew I needed to work with a professional immediately otherwise it just wasn't gonna be sustainable at all. Brandon, thank you so much for meeting with me today. Absolutely. I am a little bit into the training for ballet and I realize I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to nutrition. Typical ballerina will be about 13% body fat. What happens is the typical ballerina will just eat a few carbs because they want to try and get to that level. Also what happens is they'll start to tap into their muscle as a source of fuel and then they'll start burning muscle which creates this inadequacy with strength. Michelle's diet is going to be super clean. We want to be working with more quality carbohydrates like oats, quinoa, starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes. Things that are going to give her sustainable and quality energy. Fat is actually going to be important in this diet because it helps support joints and also help us with mobility and flexibility. Yes, I would much rather feel great during the final performance than look like a totally. ballerina should. Totally. Good morning, it's time for ballet. It's time to go. Why are you awake? Right Let's go. It is 6.30 in the morning. I have ballet training at seven. I'm not quite used to this lifestyle as a ballerina. Every day at 6 a.m. I would wake up, I would cook breakfast, I would put my hair in a very tight bun and head over to the ballet studio. I came in a little early this morning because hip flexibility is going to be a big obstacle for me over the next couple weeks, so time to get it in. I would do about an hour and a half of warm-ups and then 30 minutes of jumps and learning my choreography. And then if we had an additional third hour, I would continue running and learning new choreography every single day. Week one, she is already in a split. That is unreal, you guys. This doesn't happen after four days. This is amazing. This is so big. <laughs> On some days, I would go over to Stretch Lab where you can get professionally stretched. Patricia here is basically using a jackhammer to try and loosen. <laughs> My hip. Every other day in the evenings, I would work with Nick in the gym because I don't have all those tiny muscle fibers built up in the way professionals do. I am so annoyed right now 
because Garrett has a better fifth position than I do. What is this? What is wrong with you? <laughs> this is so annoying. My first piece is a solo dance to a song from Capellia. It's a really fascinating and beautiful story of a young girl who started to get jealous that the toy master, Capellius, was working so hard to create the beautiful doll and make the doll alive. And up, plie up, don't forget to plie. One, and up. Nice runs, and <laughs> up, down. Good. Ballet runs are nice and stretched. Sometimes we're like in the middle of a lesson and Allison is like, yeah, and then you're just gonna do this and tendu and arabesque over here. And she makes it look so easy. And then I try and my body will literally not do the thing. What? That was a little like Russian dance. <laughs> <laughs> I know it looks real simple, but y'all are just at home on a couch watching this. You should try it because damn, it's really hard. It was important for me to take on a solo piece because it was kind of like addressing one of my biggest fears, which is performing in front of people and being vulnerable and open that door for criticism on what I could look like in that moment. Just try to relax your face now. What is my face doing? Yes. <laughs> yes, you're gonna be on stage. So you have to have a nice presence. Okay. How when your body is completely dead and the muscles doesn't want to respond and you ready to scream and collapse, you need to maintain the beautiful face and you need to breathe and hide everything behind this. Today we started learning the choreography for the final piece and I'm on the floor because I'm that exhausted from the first three eight counts. And, uh, there are many more eight counts in this song. Garrett, can I show you what I learned in ballet yeah. this week? How do I say go in ballet words? Uh, five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I don't know ballet, so to me it looks perfect. I've never seen more perfect ballet in my life. Today is really exciting because I am meeting the other backup dancers for my solo piece. I kind of realized up until this point that everything I've been learning in my ballet classes has just been drills and skills and repetition of things. And once we got to the choreography, I allowed myself to just dance. Oh my god! I kind of feel a little bit of imposter syndrome, not gonna lie, because I am the soloist and I am the least experienced person here. I feel really unworthy of like all of these people laying around me. That was good. I was like, go team. The second dance that I learned was the exact dance that professional ballerinas perform in the Swan Lake Ballet. This piece is called The Four Little Swans. So it's really hard because it's a lot of fast movements and they need to be the same. Every little movement out, it's completely gonna destroy the dance. Sorry, <laughs> damn you. Being able to do Little Swans for me was important because I wanted to get as close of the actual experience to a professional ballerina as I can. There was also the added benefit of dancing alongside three professional ballerinas who have been doing this their whole life. If anyone's gonna mess up, it's gonna be me and it's gonna be really obvious that I'm the one sticking out. I think this has been a really humbling thing for me to learn because usually I go and no challenge accepted episode and I'm like, I've gotta destroy it, I've gotta smash it, I've gotta conquer it from all angles, and uh, I might not do that this time. She really has to trust herself. She's gonna be performing this in front of people, so she has to have the confidence, and that starts here in the studio. Hey, Sorry, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Seven, eight, two, yes. That was more, but yeah. <laughs> Woo. I'm honestly really frustrated and kind of embarrassed right now because I, <laughs> I just had a full-on conversation with Garrett where I basically told him I don't think I should do a recital anymore. I was even like, what if we just do a dance video instead of a recital? Because then I can do it until I get it perfect. And Garrett's very good at calling me out of my bullshit. <laughs> and he basically said that if I don't do the recital, then I'm not conquering my fear. But the part that makes me scared is being on a stage and being vulnerable and trying to do these really hard things and then potentially being told 
I look bad. And I think that's why I quit ballet the first time because I didn't feel like I would be perfect at it. And so now I should be okay not being perfect at something. So today is the day that Michelle is going to be trying on her point shoes for the first time, which is very exciting. You usually want to have at least five years of ballet training before you start point shoes, but today, Michelle, only after a few weeks of training, will be starting point. Okay guys, here's the deal. Going on point before you have proper training or before you're ready is incredibly dangerous. I am not gonna be going on point in my final performance. I'm only going to be trying it out for one single training session today under the supervision of Coach Allison. Honestly, we went back and forth as a team as to whether or not we should include it in this video because I know a lot of dancers are gonna say that I don't deserve to be on point. And you know what? They're right. <laughs> But at the end of the day, we decided to include it in the video because this is about showing the full experience and point is a major obstacle that every single ballerina has to go through. Maria Taglioni was the first ballerina who had attempt to go on the tippy toes. She put her weight so up on the toe, so it started to look that she's not touching the floor. So after that, they start to make the box a little bit harder and then it's helped the dancers go higher up on point. Okay, so let's throw them on. And I always like to start with the elastics. It already like hurts. A <laughs> oh no! Like I'm imagining standing on this. It's going like... to hurt. So does that okay. feel pretty good? Strong? Okay. Yeah, I think that feels good. So let me cut it here. Oh my god, we're sewing. <laughs> we're sewing. Would be sewing for ballet. I just did this wrong, and now I have to redo this whole ribbon. This is already like mm -hmm. not fun. How often do you have to get new point shoes? Three pairs of shoes a week. Some dancers go through like six pairs. So like every night you just sew a new... Yep. <laughs> I was like, ooh, we're gonna do fun arts and crafts. And now it's like, this is just You're as like hard so as dancing over it. <laughs> What feels really different in point shoes versus ballet flats? I think the hardest adjustment is going to be getting up and down. Just because oh. they're so hard, it's gonna feel like bricks on your feet. So you just, you just do it. You just go. Yep. One foot. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like the weight of the world is on the tips <laughs> of my toes right now, and it's just my body weight. Yeah. Like we have to do everything that's already really hard, but yep. like this. <laughs> Being a ballerina is effortless. It's just fascinating how all your body weight could be supported by this little box of the point shoes. It's very unique and incredible, and it's really beautiful. All right, so we're gonna start really slow. Use the bar as much as you want, as you can. Slowly roll up to point, and then you're gonna lift down. How did that feel? That felt like, uh, unlike anything I've ever felt before. It, it feels like what I think it some people describe violence. a medieval <laughs> torture device. Going on point was, I think, one of the most painful experiences of my life. <laughs> Is it supposed to feel like your feet are just being squeezed out of yes. your minds? Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> I felt like my toes were gonna fall off. I felt like my arches were being ripped apart, but also squished at the same time. Push. Yep, you feel it there? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> While you are trying to be graceful and beautiful and smile. It's real fun. <laughs> Good. That's it! Oh <laughs> How is this something you get used to? I don't get it. Like, do you feel just like all the pressure on your nails too? Like on your toenails? I used to. Okay. All right, let's change, because I don't want your feet to get all swollen. Okay. <laughs> Oh God. Just doing a little recovery and relaxing and icing my ankles. So I'm not gonna lie, after learning these first two dances, I was pretty mentally overwhelmed. And amongst all of this, the third dance was thrown at me, which is the pas de deux, which means dance for two. Hey, my name's Erin Smind. I've danced around the world. I've performed with American Ballet Theatre 2 in New York, the Royal Ballet in London, and the Joffrey Ballet in Chicago. I played the Snow Cavalier in Disney's Nutcracker in the Four Realms with Misty Copeland, which was pretty cool. Partnering is one of my favorite parts of the ballet. It's really fun, like being lifted and being supported by the gentlemen. So I think you're gonna enjoy it too. For me, the favorite part of the pas de deux is the chemistry with my partner. 
It's not only technical things, it's just emotional things. So remember we learned promenade on the floor? Yes. It's so like a rotation. A partner. So um, let's just show you. So you're going to be an arabesque, and Aaron is just going to promenade you around. So he turns Yes. yes. <laughs> Dancing solo, it's just you out there, and if something goes wrong, you just like make it up. Almost. It was almost, yes. almost. <laughs> With a partner, it's an art and a sport rolled into one, and you have to make it look effortless, and I think that's the hardest thing. Oh, that's it! Good, bend this leg, bend this leg, bend this leg! <laughs> the partner dance was different from the group dance and required us to be on the same energy wavelength. It requires a lot of trust and practice from both sides. One of us messes up, then it could be very dangerous. So one thing that was really good was that you kept your back up. Yeah, you don't want to drop because that's how you can also hurt your back. Yeah. And then Aaron can also lose control of you. But the pas de deux actually ended up being my favorite dance. It allowed me this type of freedom when I danced that was new and fresh. It was just cool to just like feel beautiful and graceful and then have some really strong guy like throw me in the air and be there to support me. It's just really satisfying to feel at one with a piece of music and getting lost in the music. Point the bottom foot, point, point, that's it! <laughs> Nice! Nice! Oh, <laughs> Good job! That's partnering pretty 101. much the big movements. Yeah. Yeah. If you wanted to maybe think of something that you wanted to inspire this piece yeah. or make it your own. Yeah, or like, yeah, how you can use that to propel your dance to the next level. Yeah. Convey a message to the audience. Yeah. I, I don't know, I didn't even like remember. Oh yeah, dance is an expression. Yeah, of it's, an, it's well that's it's like so athletic, but it's also an art, so I think that's the beauty of it. Just doing steps, it's not good enough. You could see it once, but it's not gonna touch your heart. I have been doing a lot of reflection on what Allison and Aaron said earlier about finding someone or something to dedicate a dance to. Throughout the dance, my character kind of becomes more free and playful and at one with the partner. And that's exactly how I feel in my relationship with Garrett. He is honestly probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. The best friend, partner, support I could ever ask for and someone that truly does make me feel like I'm being lifted to the sky. And so, my partner dance is dedicated to Garrett. I've learned all three dances for my final performance, and now we're just rehearsing and still training a ton, and it's just really, really fun. Like, I think I love ballet. Five, six, seven, eight, up, around, good, one more so tight. Down, down. Oh, that's it. This art form is not simple. We see on stage everything glamorous and fabulous, but what it takes to be that good and look that effortless. This is kind of the first time when I sincerely question, will I be able to pull off the final challenge? Stretch the knee back. Good. Again. Will I look like a laughing stock? That's it. A little bit higher. I don't know what I was doing. What happened? Will I be an embarrassment to the ballet community? I haven't danced for an audience ever. Hopefully we pull it off. We are gathered here today to see an amazing spectacle. This evening, we are going to see a woman that can literally do everything, do more things. So Michelle decided to take it on her to become a ballerina within six weeks. Six weeks. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Are you guys prepared? The one and only, here we go. Here's Michelle Coppelia.
Stepping out on stage for the first time was a wild rush. Seeing all the people in the audience, seeing all of the bright lights. It's a lot. It's very different from rehearsal. Still, at the same time, looking into the faces of the people of the audience, I couldn't help but think, oh yeah, I'm being judged right now. Anybody can understand how difficult Little Swans is without actually doing it themselves. The best way I can explain this dance is doing calculus with your feet. And like Arena said, you have to be perfectly in sync with three other dancers. I know that my dance didn't turn out perfect, but I'm really proud of how far I came with Little Swans. So the next one you guys want to see is a pas de deux, which means a dance for two. It is a more contemporary kind of piece. So ladies and gentlemen, the pas de deux. I felt really connected during the partner dance and just this wave of emotion kind of came over me but in a really special way that didn't overcome my ability to focus on what the moves are and everything. I've never really thought of dance as such an intimate art form but this really proved to me that dance is about sharing a story with someone else. Performing in front of an audience was actually my favorite part of this whole experience. And in the beginning, it was what I dreaded the most. And while I by no means am anywhere close to being a professional ballerina, I finally feel like I belong on this stage. I went into this ballet challenge expecting that it was going to be a bunch of hard, fast, rigid rules on how to be beautiful and graceful and perfect. But what I truly learned was all of those long hours in the ballet studio lead you to accept this level of uncomfortability that lets you be vulnerable and open with an audience in a way I haven't experienced before. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment below with what extreme challenge I should take on next. I would love to hear your ideas. 
And as always, subscribe so we can keep on going on more adventures together. Thank you so much to my incredible coaches, Allison and Aaron, for supporting me and encouraging me every single day of this process. Be sure to follow them via the links below. And also a special thank you to Sodansa, Discount Dance Supply, and Ciao Bella Tutus for supplying the beautiful dancewear that you have seen throughout this entire video. This week's I Am Ultra shout out is to Joe. If you would like a chance at being next week's shout out, just create a post on Instagram and tag me in it using the hashtag I Am Ultra, telling me a little bit about how you have overcome a recent obstacle in your life. That's all for today, and thanks so much for watching.